Triton have made it really simple to be able to take away any saw slump that you may have. So a fantastic saw for mounting, a fantastic saw in its own right as a handheld ma machine. Okay. So we're going to be using it now here in cross cut mode and we're going to cut to size the various different lengths and all I do is I put all my measurements and markings that I require for my project so I, sp I spend a lot less time having to measure and mark. Okay. All I do is I take a stop, I clamp it on and I clamp it on each dimension that I require. We haven't done that for today. Okay. So we're just going to cut purely to the line. So it's going to bear with me as I do measure and mark a little bit. Okay. But it, sh it shouldn't take too long. We've done most of the cutting uh, as is already. Okay. So let's do these cuts. Okay, so that's, that's for the short sides of the box, okay? So we'll stick those down there. Then we need to do, out of that piece of 120 millimeters, we need to do a couple of cuts out of this quickly. The first one that we need to do, I just want to see which side is square, that looks the side that we cut square. We're going to do two pieces of 370 millimeters and two pieces of 190. Okay, there we go. This does look long enough, so it shouldn't be too much trouble. So these are for the gabled handles that we're going to be doing with the router a little bit later on. Okay. Okay, so those are for the handles and we'll work on them fairly shortly. And the last two pieces that we need are at 190 190 millimeters. Okay, these have to be a little bit more accurate, otherwise they're not going to fit properly. So let's just mark this out. Here we go. So those are for my little partitions that we're going to be using on the inside of the box. Okay. So would you believe it, that's all the cutting done for the project. So I'm going to now, I'm going to be pulling the router table here and then showing you how we can now use the router table to make all the various different joints that we're going to need to do. And I'm going to just take the saw out of here because we're going to do one more function with the work center. Uh, in a couple of a couple of minutes time. Okay, so we'll take that saw out of here. What we're going to be using in here now is our router. Here it is over here. Okay. Okay, and this is a sub table. Okay, what that's going to do now is just allow us to lift the wood up to the cutter. Obviously, we can't make a slot in the table for every single cut that you'd want to do. Okay, so all we do is we now lift the wood up to the table, and that allows us to do a variety of other different cuts. 
So we're going to do a housing joint. Now a housing joint is really great for this type of project, okay? Because what it allows us to have a really strong solid joint where this piece of wood is going to join in from above into there. Okay, and the housing joint is really a, a, a fantastic joint for, for taking weight. So for a bookcase or shelving, it's a great joint to be able to do. And the easiest way to do it is like I'm going to show you now on the, uh, the router. The, we're using the router as in the overhead mode on the work center. Okay. What I'm going to do, just mark this out. So we're going to do, we're going to do this 150 millimeters from each end. Okay, there we go, there's 150. Okay, there's 150. There we go. There we go. Okay, so the the join is going to take place on the inside of that, just over there on the other side. Okay. Great. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we want to set our router to precisely five millimeters. I want to do uh, the rebate must be exactly five millimeters. Now, the Triton router is really one of the best machines available on the market. There's really nothing that can come close to it, okay? And it has some fantastic features on it. One, one patented feature that really stands out is the fact that you have a, a macro depth adjustment here, which allows you very quickly to pull in that clutch and then on a rack and pinion, raise and lower the height of the machine. No other router in the world has that. And this allows you very precisely to be able to set the machine to the correct height that you require. Let's stick that in. So what this is over here, this is a, uh, this is a depth stop, okay, and it has a turret at the bottom over here. Turret being having three different faces. The first one is the zero point, so that's wh what you use to zero your router to, okay, to, to get it to your datum, okay. And to do that, all we do is we drop the router down so that it literally is just touching the top of the wood. So it can still slide over, no problem whatsoever, but it's literally just touching the top of the wood. And then what we do is we lock and we mark that position. And then on the turret over here, there are a, a couple of scales over here. So we're going to set the scale here to exactly 5 millimeters. Turn it round, and that spring-loaded post over there is actually hollow. So now we can plunge the router down exactly 5 millimeters. Okay, so we've got to have a 5 mil rebate all the way there. I'm just going to do a cut in my fence there quickly so that I've got a reference as to where we're cutting to. Okay. Okay, so I just line up the line that I've drawn there now with the edge of that cut. And now we can do our rebate for our housing joint. So there you go. Pretty quick, pretty easy to be able to do. Let's do the other side quickly. And we'll carry on with our, our project. Okay, there we go. So what's going to happen is that little 
that is going to fit just in here. Nice tight fitting joint. Okay. And that's going to be the partition for our box. Okay. Pretty simple. Pretty easy. Okay. And Triton makes it possible for you to do that with the greatest of ease. Okay, so I'm going to pull this out the way. We're going to be using the Triton router table. Okay. And I'm going to show you all the accessories that fit onto the router table before I actually show you what the standalone router table is about. Okay. So we're going to be using the jigsaw mounting kit, which allows you to mount any jigsaw onto the, onto the table. Uh, the jigsaw kit consists of this grey plate with the fittings that re you require to attach your jigsaw. It's got this boom on the arm over here, which just attaches to the side of the frame of the router table. And what's great about this is it allows you to have downward pressure uh, against your material. You have the dust extraction so that you can follow a line. But more importantly, uh, the blade is held square by these two little blocks in front. Okay. If you've ever cut with a jigsaw, you'll know it's got a bit of a mind of its own. And you, you generally ne never get a straight cut out of it. Now, because the blade is sort of being held exactly square, you're getting a wonderful straight cut with which you can use. So we're going to just now be cutting out, sort of just proud of this line. We're not going to cut to the line. We're going to just be slightly bigger. Okay, And we're going to come back with the router a little bit later and actually trim this flush to a template. Uh, and that will give us a beautiful shape with which we can work. Okay, So let's do this cut. Okay, so we're just cutting very rough of that line. Okay, so we're just getting that shape. <coughs> Excuse me, and removing some of the excess stock around the uh, the wood there. Okay, so that's our jigsaw kit. It really allows you to get far, you know, a lot more use out of your uh, your jigsaw. Okay, and be able to use it uh, almost like a mini bandsaw. Okay, great. So now we want to carry on with the project and do a bit of joint making. So I'm going to pull this jigsaw out. Okay, so we're going to take, take our uh, jigsaw off and uh, we're going to <laughs> put our router back in. And this is what the biscuit joiner looks like. Uh, you'll be interested to know and see how it works. Well, in the table over there, there's a little slot. And this little nipple over here fits directly into that slot. You cannot move the biscuit joiner, so it won't engage these unless... It won't engage that pin unless that's depressed. See how that slides down? Okay. So otherwise it won't move. Press these over here, now it will move up. Okay. So it's just a safety so that you cannot accidentally expose the, the cutter. You can depress that and then the cutter will, will expose. Okay. So just like that. Okay, let's hook up our dust collection. Okay, and we're just going to lock this down. Okay, so because always we want it to slide, but we don't want it lifting up at all. Okay, so we've got a biscuit joint now, the base, into the long sides. And we need to be a bit careful now because we've already started with our joint making on the inside. So we don't want to put joints on the outside. Okay. So what I'm going to do is we want to put, I'm just going to put a biscuit over there and a biscuit over there, okay? Um, that'll be sufficient for this pr project, okay? Uh, it's going to help just to locate it over there. We've got a really strong housing joint which is going to pull the box together in any case. We could probably over this length could put a couple more biscuits in, but we're just going to make it quick and easy and put just a biscuit there and there. So I've set my fence now to 220 millimeters, and all we're going to do is we're going to plunge it on the side and do this cut. Okay, 
Okay, so there we've put in just two very simple little slots, quick and easy. Okay, let's do the adjoining slot in the base. So here's our base over here. The base is now shorter than the side, so remember we're working from center. So we subtract the thickness of the wood. We're going to set up our fence here to 200 millimeters. There we go. Okay, now let's do the base. Very, very simple and easy to be able to do. And what is very important with the bis biscuit joint is that you always work on the face side flat on the table because you don't want to have biscuits at varying heights. So you always work from the one side flat on the table. The width of this is 180 millimeters. So we want to put one biscuit dead center to join in the short side. So all we're going to do is set this to 90 millimeters. Okay, so that's our base ready. We're just going to put the, uh, the biscuit slots in the short sides and then we're ready for, uh, for our biscuit joining when we have to. The, the short sides are 220 millimeters long, so we put it dead center, 110. And that's the biscuit joiner. It's such a simple, easy product to be able to use. It'll allow you to make very, very strong and quick laminates. Okay? You can also use the angled sides of the fence to do very strong and neat 45 for your mitres. Okay? And uh, being a biscuit joiner, it allows you to work very, very quickly using the scales provided. Okay? Uh, there, the, a handle biscuit joiner just does not have the speed of use that this that this system has. Okay, great. So let's carry on. We quickly want to make the box. So I'm going to pop that out. Okay, there we go. That's our biscuit joiner out. And now we're going to carry on and use the finger jointer, which I have over here. And we're going to change cutters. We're going to go to the finger jointer cutter. It's a half inch finger jointer cutter. Okay, half inch shank, but also half inch in width. And I'm sure you'll agree with me, the feature that we have here of the Triton router by being able to change router bits from above the table single-handedly is just really awesome. Uh, there's no other router in the world that you can do that on. And that's what makes this machine just so simple. I've changed that router bit in seconds. On other machines, you'd have to go under the machine, under the table, press a button, use a spanner, sometimes two spanners. Uh, I can change a bit here in seconds, where on other machines it takes minutes and eventually you give up because it just is a frustration. Okay, <laughs> but with the Triton router, really, really great to be able to use. Okay, so we're gonna do the finger jointing now. Now, finger jointing, it's a very nice, neat looking, and yet structural joint. The first thing we have to do is lower the height of the router. So we lower the router basically just to the thickness of the wood, just slightly, slightly past. You want your fingers just slightly to protrude and you can sand them off a little later. So we set that there, and then we've got this over here, it just slips in just like that. Okay, there we go. And uh, now you've, you've got to pay a little bit of attention because remember we've now got an inside of our box and an outside of the box. It's very easy to all of a sudden have your biscuit join on your face side and you don't want that to happen. So, very easy to be able to work this out. All you do is line up your pieces as they're going to be joined together, okay? And have the bottom on the bottom, top, top, have the inside faces up against each other like that. Same thing on the long sides, okay? So there's our joints on the bottom, joints on the bottom, that's how they're going to be joined together. Inside faces together, just like that. And make sure the bottoms are here, top is here. Okay. Now we're going to set the fence of the finger jointer okay, to the thickness of the wood. Okay, so we just move that fence in like that. That slides up there like that. 
and there we go. So we've set that now basically to the thickness of the wood there. Okay, make sure I've tightened that down. Okay, there we go. Now, on the finger jointer, you have an offset jig. You don't want your fingers to come out like that. You want them to come out like that so that they make a very good quality solid joint. And that's achieved with this little offset jig. So you'll notice there's a quarter inch side so you can make quarter inch fingers uh, for maybe a more decorative jewelry box or something like that. Uh, you, you'd, be, you'd be using then you know, obviously a quarter inch cutter. But then you've got the half inch side. And you'll also notice very subtly on this jig over here there is a rounded edge and there's also a sharp edge. Okay. And that's important. It doesn't matter where or how you start. You can start on either edge. When you flip it over though to do the opposite end of the box, you need to turn the jig over as well. Okay. You can't have two right hand sides of the box. You've got to have a right and a left. Okay. Trust me. You'll do it once, you'll do it twice, but eventually it'll come around to it. Okay. But very simple and very easy to be able to do if you just follow that, those processes. So there we go. I want you to make sure that our wood is sitting nice and flush over there. Get yourself a really nice G-clamp. Okay, let's have a look. What have we got here? I'm going to try these ones, okay. Okay, so you want it up against that jig and you just want to clamp your wood nicely together. Make sure it's nice and square. And I think for this wood here, I'm just going to put a second clamp on just to make sure we don't have any movement. Okay, so that, that there can also just be a little bit more adjusted, be a bit tighter. Okay, so very little movement like that, but obviously you want it to be moving laterally. Okay, now we should be able to do this cut. Oh, one thing that's very important with finger jointing is you need to use dust extraction. Okay, any dust on the surface of the table okay, will affect the quality of the joint. So you need to make sure that you are extracting all that dust. You don't have dust getting under the wood and changing the angle or the thickness of, of the, uh, uh, the fingers that you're cutting. Okay, so there we go. There we go. Nice and flat. So you're only going to use the offset jig for the first cut. Okay? Then there is a, a spacing finger right the way through the unit. We're going to move this up to that spacing finger and now we're going to do the following cut. Okay. And then each cut after that as well. There's your cut. Very, very quick and easy. Flip that over. Okay, so you're going to flip it head over heels. The jig, same difference. Flip that head over heels as well. Make sure you've got no dust in there. And we just repeat exactly the same process over again. And then we're going to have a box. So you can ideally do two pieces of wood at a time if you want. Okay, if you're just joining, wanting to join two together or as I'm doing here now, four pieces in one go. And then your whole box is assembled pretty quick and easy. Okay. We'll check and make sure that that's all lined up now. Okay. 
Okay. Nicely up against, nicely there. Let's do the cuts. So if we've done this correctly, <laughs> okay, we should have a pretty nice, neat, strong, structural and yet decorative joint. So let's have a look. So that's going to go together just like that. Pretty quick, pretty easy. Okay. So that's our finger jointing. Now we're ready to assemble the entire box. So. We're going to pop that in and we can get this glued up and clamped up. So what I'm thinking of doing is maybe just gluing this all together very quickly. So by tomorrow we can just carry on. Project, we've glued it up as you can see and that's gone together really neatly uh, what we've done over here is we've used the triton biscuits and we've actually biscuit jointed in that joint that we put the base into the sides uh, 